Hey everybody, so this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while but never got around to doing it. Uh, but now we're gonna do it. Um, I want to take a trip back in time to the 2015 NHL draft and look at what could have been if the Boston Bruins drafted well with their three consecutive first round picks back in 2015. Before we start the video, I just quickly want to remind everyone to please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It greatly helps out the channel and is very, very much appreciated. Um, so back to 2015 we go. June 2015, the NHL draft, and it's an exciting time. The Boston Bruins go into that draft with uh, the 14th overall pick as their own. They also picked up the 13th overall pick from the Los Angeles Kings in the Milan Lucic trade and the 15th overall pick um, from the Calgary Flames in the Dougie Hamilton trade. So that leaves Boston picking 13, 14, 15, three consecutive picks in the first round of the NHL draft. This is a chance for Boston to load up on talent, on young talent, on future star players, and really set this team for the future going forward. What does Boston do with those picks? At number 13, they take defenseman Jakob Zaborl. Okay, at number 14, they take left wing Jake DeBrusque. That worked out. Good pick. Solid. At number 15, they took right wing Zach Seneshin. Okay, so let's go back and, and review these picks and then look at what could have been. Jake DeBrusque at 14 is working out. DeBrusque is still a young player. He's 23. He's a perennial 20 goal scorer already. He's a second line left winger, already a top six forward. A-OK -okay with that pick. Jake DeBrusque, A-plus, worked out great. Jakob Zaborl. Mmm. Yeah, Z Jakob Zaborl, how do I put this? Stinks. Stinks. Jakob Zaborl will never be an NHL defenseman. Mark my words on that right now. Jakob Zaborl will never be a regular NHL defenseman. Um, I've watched him play in Providence now in the AHL for the last few years. He stinks. He doesn't do anything particularly well. He doesn't bring really any offense to the table. Um, he's not good defensively either. He's not a great skater. He's not physical at all. He doesn't clear out the front of his net. Um, I just, I don't see anything that makes me think Jakob Zaborl is going to go to the NHL, uh, at any, you know, as a regular NHL player. And I'm starting to think that the Bruins agree with that as well, because the Bruins have had a lot of injuries on defense this season. And uh, they've been playing Stephen Camper. They've been playing Connor Clifton. And when they've needed call-ups, they've called up Erho Vakanainen and Jeremy Lazan before calling up Jakob Zaborl. Zaborl has been left in the AHL, and I think with good reason. Um, it's, it's not looking good that I don't think that pick is going to work out. The other pick, Zach Seneshin, right wing. Um... Let's just say I went to the Providence Bruins game last week and Zach Seneshin was playing on the fourth line in the AHL. Yes, he's not a fourth liner at the NHL level. He's not anything at the NHL level. He was playing on the fourth line in the AHL. That's not looking good either. Seneshin's got some speed. He's, he's got some skill, but I just don't see NHL level talent there, at least not yet. And he's, 2015 was five years ago now. He's running out of time as well. I don't see him ever being a Boston Bruin on a regular basis either. So right now, it looks like Boston hit on one out of those three picks. And this isn't a knock necessarily against Boston, because if you look overall statistically, drafting is very difficult. Most teams only get two or three NHL level players out of each draft. Um... So I should be happy that Boston hit on any of them, and they did with Jake DeBrusque. However, for the sake of this video, and because I think it's fun to look at, let's go look and see what Boston could have had with those picks. So we're going to keep Jake DeBrusque drafted at 14 overall because that one has worked out. But let's look at some of the players that were drafted after Jakob Zaborl and Zach Seneshin. At number 16 to the New York Islanders went Matthew Barzal. 
Imagine Matthew Barzal on the Boston Bruins. This is Boston's a team that went to the Stanley Cup final last year with their current team. Imagine adding Barzal to this team. I mean, you probably wouldn't have David Krejci anymore because Barzal would be your number two center. Bergeron's obviously your number one. Barzal would be your number two. You wouldn't have any need for Krejci and you probably would have traded him, hopefully to get some assets back in return, maybe some more prospects or another first round draft pick. E either way, Barzal on the Bruins would be an absolute light show. Um, you'd, I would honestly think that you would keep their top line of Bergeron, Pasternak, and Marchand together. Then you would have Barzal and DeBrusque on the second line, probably lighting it up together. And who knows about that right side? That's still a question now. Barzal could have been taken at either 13 or 15. Kyle Connor was taken 17th overall. Now, Kyle Connor is now lighting it up for the Winnipeg Jets. He's a 30-goal guy for them. You could have had him with either of those 13 or 15th overall picks. Now you drafted Jake DeBrusque, who is also a left wing. You have Brad Marchand, who's also a left wing. So you de didn't necessarily need Kyle Connor. But if you add him to this team, maybe one of those other guys switches to the right side. Maybe Connor plays the right side. And now you have a second line right wing that you desperately need that the Bruins have not been able to consistently fill that spot with any particular player over the last few years. So... Another top six forward could have been in the lineup. And imagine if they took Matt Barzal, Jake DeBrusque, and Kyle Connor and hit on all three picks. That would be nuts. Boston was obviously looking for a defenseman. That's why they took Zaboro with the 13th overall pick. Well, let's just say they could have had a much better defenseman than Jakob Zaboro because Thomas Shabbat went 18th overall to the Ottawa Senators. And now Shabbat is a top pair level NHL defenseman, even though he's still very, very young. Already there, looks like a top offensive defenseman of the future in the NHL, could have been a Boston Bruin. Imagine Thomas Shabbat and Tor uh, Charlie McAvoy, along with Brandon Carlo, being your top three defensemen for the future in Boston. That would be one hell of a defense core, even with... Zdeno Chara in his, you know, getting older and probably retiring soon and the potential for Tori Krug to have to get moved. Um, that would be an incredible group going forward for Boston's back end. They could have had Shabbat. They wanted Zaboral instead. They did not make the right choice. Even later on in the draft, there were some tremendous, tremendous uh, picks as well as 23rd overall in the first round was Brock Besser. And this, this to me, hurts the most because Boston has been trying to fill that right wing second line spot for years now. They have, ever since David Backus didn't work out as a top six player in Boston, that right wing spot on the second line next to David Krejci and Jake DeBrusque has been a huge problem for Boston. And if they had drafted Brock Besser, there is your second line right wing there. He's a 20-goal scorer. He's going to be a 30-goal scorer at the NHL level. He would have been perfect on that right wing side. Now imagine Jake DeBrusque, Matt Barzal, and Brock Besser as the Boston Bruins' second line at this point. How incredible would that be? Now, that's probably unrealistic that they would have gotten all three of them, but imagine the team now with Jake DeBrusque, David Krejci, and Brock Besser on the right side. Oh, come on, guys. What could have been? Also, taken 24th overall, Travis Konechny, who is now an all-star, has grown into a great goal scorer for the Philadelphia Flyers, and one of my favorite young players in the league, as I love the chippy uh, attitude that he plays with, the chip on his shoulder, and the style of play that he plays with. He goes to the net, he's not afraid to be physical, and he scores a ton of goals. So Travis Konechny is another guy that Boston could have had with that pick. So to recap, the chances of Boston hitting on all three picks are very, very slim. Hitting on two would have been nice, though, because we could have had Jake DeBrusque and Thomas Shabbat. We could have had Jake DeBrusque and Matt Barzal. We could have had Jake DeBrusque and Brock Besser or Travis Konechny. That Any of that happening would significantly improve this already spectacular Boston Bruins team. Jakob Zaboral not going to work out at the NHL level. Zach Seneshin, I don't think, going to work out at the NHL level. Jake DeBrusque has good pick on Boston. They got one out of three right. 
just it's they could have done so much better if they hit on another one of those picks very unlikely that they would have hit on all three statistically but they could have done better than only getting one of those players out of it so this again this wasn't to bash the boston bruins drafting this was to take a look at what could have been and um it's scary to think about how good boston could have could be if you added thomas shabbat to that lineup if you added matt barzal or kyle connor or brock besser to that lineup or even travis konechny and the the one for me that hurts the most as a bruins fan is brock besser because he's a right wing a position you desperately have needed for the last few years he's a sec your second line right wing spot has been such a problem he could have easily easily filled that and you missed him. You wanted Zach Sinishin instead, who's now playing on the fourth line in the AHL. So what could have been the Bruins kind of flubbed the 2015 draft, especially with those those three consecutive picks, but at least they hit on one of them. We did get Jake DeBrusque out of it, which has worked out very, very well. But uh, it, man, it just, it stings to go back and look and see what could have been. This Bruins team could be even better. But anyway, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. Again, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you guys soon.